gentlemen, we are back. Man, it feels good. I know, I know. I said I was going to be doing them every week, but you know what happened? Let me tell you what happened. I made that really long video that took me a long time, and I posted it, and it got like 200 views. It's up, it's up now, but uh, I just realized I was a little bit too early, so I think it's time, man. Um, Packers just eliminated, just got eliminated. A lot of other teams are officially eliminated, so I think a lot of people are ready to move on. We're ready to start talking about the draft, so we got another mock draft coming today. It's updated. I just want to run through a couple preliminaries right quick. A couple rules, because some of you guys get a little, little mouthy in the comment section, which is fine. Because as I've said, for those of you that are new, I am not, nor do I try to pretend to be a scout. All right, I do something a little bit different here. We do mock drafts. We learn together. We got a, a great Facebook group that I hope you get in. We, we talk through this stuff. It's all about like community and talking through things. So we're going to have a lot of fun doing this stuff. But understand that when I make these picks, I'm using this here. This is my big board. This is NFLBigBoard.com. This is an aggregation of about, I don't know, a ton of different big boards from around the web. This is what I'm using. Now, I know some of you guys don't understand this philosophy, and you get the first overall pick, and it's like, we don't need an edge rusher. We need a wide receiver. You're the worst ever. It's like, dude, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's not how reality works. I'm not taking Nikhil Harry number one overall. I know some of you will never understand that, but this is what I'm using right here. I also understand some of these things are different, right? There's certain guys on here who are flying up the boards, other guys that are falling. I'm going to take some guys that probably aren't going to be there come draft time, and that's okay because you know what I don't want to do? I don't want to do the same exact video every single week. So I'm going to do different stuff. Every single week is going to be a little bit different, and that's a good thing, and that's okay. We'll get through this together, I promise you. Just relax. Now, another thing, though. I do like constructive criticism in the comments because sometimes I miss stuff. I work real hard at learning your team. I'm a Packers fan. I got that team. I know it pretty well. All the other teams, I'm doing my best to try to gauge what's going on. Occasionally, I miss stuff, right? I'll, I'll mock somebody to you, and it's like, look, your guy's defensive line just isn't working that well. And it's like, uh, dude, we've got like two really good defensive linemen on IR. They're going to be back next year. So that's a bad pick. And it's like, oh, shoot, you're right. I need that stuff, right? Let me know all these different things. I love your opinions on the pick and all this stuff. But again, we're going to be doing a lot of these. So we'll we'll, we'll get through this, I promise. Um, what else? I think that's about it. Otherwise, just make sure you check the date. Okay, if you're commenting on this from a five-month-old video, and it's like, why would you pick that guy? It's like, because it's five months old, dude. Come on. Check the date. Otherwise, I think we're... Uh, I think we're about ready to go. Um, again, NFLBigBoard.com, I would definitely encourage you to check it out. I, I had this site last year, but this is the new and improved. Um, we've got, if you come over here, bing, bong, bong. It's going to take forever, obviously. Really slow today. 352 prospects. I've got over 1,000 unofficial prospects, but uh, you have to have a certain number of rankings before I let you get on here. Highlights, film, news, report. I mean, this is this is everything you're going to need. you got a search feature here if you want Nikhil Harry. Uh, again, this is too slow, but there you go. You can also search down here. So I would definitely encourage you to check this out. In fact, you should probably just play along as I'm doing this, because if I mock somebody to you and on draft day, just come in here and learn everything you need to know about them. But anyways, let's get started. we got to get flying here. Um, again, so number one overall, 49ers on the clock. Please remember that um, the season is still going on. So every couple days or so, there's games going on, which means the draft order changes. The draft order is already different. You know, it is what it is. Calm yourself. I understand that the draft order changed. You know, I know you're you're better than this, you're worse than this, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's going to be okay. Um, I will say, though, really quickly, I'm very glad the 49ers won because I hate when the 49ers have the first pick in the draft. I just don't like that at all, and I hope you guys don't ever get back up to the first pick. But let's get into it. With the first overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Nick Bosa, um, <laughs> edge rusher out of Ohio State. I got it. Doing it live is tough, man. 
So here's why I don't like this. And I, you know, I've been listening to all the the different um, podcasts and everything else. And they're like, this is easy. 49ers, Nick Bosa all day long. And I wrote Joey Bosa. So that's really going to mess me up. I got to fix that. You know, this, this is the easy, it's not an easy pick. This is a horrible pick. I hate this pick. And if I was doing trades, I would trade out of this spot 100 times out of 100 because I just hate this. But I've gone back and forth 100 times and I wanted to at least do this one time because again, you know, we got to mix it up. And if I'm going to not do it for the rest of the year, I got to at least do it once. Here, here's what I don't like. And I'm assuming you know what I don't like. You got Solomon Thomas in 2017, DeForest Buckner in 2016, Eric Armstead in 2015. Two of those guys are top 10 picks. The most recent, Solomon Thomas in 2017, was your third overall pick. If we're getting Nick Bosa, who's going on the bench? Your 2017 number three overall pick, Solomon Thomas, who we're basically saying, oh, I give up. Really? That's what's easy about this pick? That's so easy? Like, oh, yeah, pff, he's garbage. Just, it'll, be, it'll be him and Eric Armstead. It's going to be awesome, man. It's going to be great. No, sorry, not into it. Now, the, the other way we can go with this is we hope Solomon Thomas improves. Eric Armstead, as he goes along, is going to be looking for a bigger contract. We can trade him, get a ton of value because he's pretty good, and then we have Solomon Thomas and Nick Bosa. But still, why do you want to trade away Eric Armstead? So it's not a super easy thing. But here's what I do understand is you don't pass up elite talent when you have the opportunity, which is why I say trade it away. Because you got two options in this in, at this pick. You either take Nick Bosa or you trade it. You, you don't take somebody else, I, I don't think. So um, I'm going to take Nick Bosa, and um, that's just what we're going to do. Again, I, I don't think it's an easy pick at all, and I'm very glad you guys are currently in the number four spot. I don't have to have this heartburn anymore until you guys move back up but uh there you go nick bosa to the 49ers with the second overall pick in the 2019 nfl draft the arizona cardinals select ed oliver defensive tackle out of houston this is this is brutal we're gonna get through it though now this isn't this is one of those things where a lot of people are gonna be like oh ed oliver you know because he's starting to slip a little bit Quinn and Williams is now the big dog. Some of them, some people think he's he's number one. Most people these days, especially I would say the fans, are saying he's at least number two. Starting to kind of cool on Ed Oliver a little bit. But again, I'm using my board, and if you look, I'm not going to go back to it. But on the far right side of my board, it shows the averages, and the average basically means what is the average from let's call it 35 different big boards. What is his average rank? So it gives you not just one, two, three, four, five, but it shows you the discrepancy. So the difference between two and three, you can see like, at a, well, let me just look at it here. You can't see it, but let me look at it. So Ed Oliver's average rank across all these big boards is 3.1. So basically he's third. Quinn and Williams' average rank is 5.3. He's basically fifth. So it's, it's a pretty big discrepancy between the two. So according to our board now, and I understand different opinions, different things, whatever, Ed Oliver is top dog, and it's by a pretty wide margin. Now, in terms of why this pick, this is another one I can be, to be completely honest, I'm tempted to trade away just because if I'm looking at the Arizona Cardinals and I had to rank what your biggest needs are, I don't think defensive tackle is a top one. Not that you guys have great defensive tackles, but it's just not your top priority, and I also really want offense. But again, Cardinals fans, do there's nothing. There's nothing here unless you maybe want to take Jonah Williams, but at two, I don't think so, man. And if you're taking Noah Fant, Nikhil Harry – whoever or a quarterback which no it's just not time so trade the spot or take Ed Oliver or Quinnen Williams or whatever um but Ed Oliver currently is the highest guy and again when you're this bare bones as a team you just got to take freaks and when you have an opportunity to take freaks you take freaks Ed Oliver is the biggest freak on our board according to our board so it's not that tough of a pick with the third overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, if I click on that one more time, I'm going to have a meltdown. The Oakland Raiders select Quinnen Williams, defensive tackle, Alabama. So I love Quinnen so much. And I, I, so a couple different things. I said I'm not a scout, but I absolutely watch these guys and I absolutely have opinions on these guys, and I'm going to tell you what they are. So there's going to be people I pick that I don't even want in the first round. I, I, I would not touch them in the first round, but... Sticking to the board, right? So we'll see how it goes. Quinn and Williams, though, man. Oof. And it, it's, it's going to be hard to predict Gruden. Uh, the team's pretty bare bones. But, uh, again, it's just a situation where, in my opinion, there's just three guys that are just absolute monsters. The board currently reflects that. This is the third of three. 
and I think Rudin just has to do the right thing here. You know, he's an offensive-minded guy, so he's probably going to want to fix that, I would assume. But if he goes offense here, he's out of his mind. I mean, unless he, he wants to trade. And one of the one of these mocks, I am going to do a trade with the Packers to the Raiders just because I want to see the Raiders with five picks <laughs> or four picks or whatever it would be, um, just because that would be funny. But, um, no, I, I, just, I think this is, this is another one of those things that you just have to do. Uh, number two overall by Kuyper. Um, Pro Football Focus has him as SEC Player of the Year. He won the Outland Trophy for Best Defensive Lineman of the Year. He's maybe the ve- best defensive football or best football player in all of college, arguably. Just um, he's been unstoppable. He's just an absolute freak. So once again, we're sticking with the board. You take freaks when freaks are available, and that's all there is to it. And if you're not going to do it, you trade. And there's no reason to it right here. The Raiders need help. They need defensive line, and this guy is just an absolute monster. With a fourth overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Greedy Williams, cornerback, LSU. Now, it's pretty boring. We're sticking right with the board. I promise we're going to mix it up a little bit. I'm not just going to go directly in line. But I think the pick makes a little bit of sense. So the Falcons are kind of weird. They're a better team than what they're producing right now. And I think if you look at it, the offense and defense are not very good. But the offense has talent. Right, all the talent that you guys need is on offense. Maybe a couple tweaks. You know, offensive coordinator thing is a mess. Obviously, since you lost Shanahan, it's been kind of a nightmare. But the difference in talent between offense and defense is pretty stark. So we need to focus on defense. Unfortunately, there's nothing but defense available for us. So you know, you got Grady Jarrett on the defensive line. You've got Jones at linebacker because he looks pretty good at safety. If you guys can get a true lockdown corner, that that could be a a really big difference maker. Another situation where I know Greedy's not the top guy. Whatever, man. Whatever. We'll see how it goes. As of right now, Greedy Williams, number one. I listen to the Draft Network guys, too. I know what they say. I hear what they say. And understand, that's that's one of the benefits of NFLBigBoard.com. I have their list, and I also have other people's lists. And it's aggregated together. So you have their opinions and other people's opinions across a massive spectrum and it comes together into one and it'll continue to shift and evolve over time and that's how these videos are going to change but again as of right now greedy williams is a top guy we're calling him a lockdown guy uh mcshay and kuiper called him the top lockdown corner in the uh nfl draft there it is and also greedy williams has officially declared so we don't have to worry about that becoming uh, a problem so we will be seeing greedy williams in the very near future With the fifth overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Jonah Williams, offensive tackle, Alabama. So we're not taking the best player available, so we are getting away from our board a little bit here, Uh, but we are taking our top offensive prospect, pretty much our only offensive prospect in the top half of the draft. But um, you know what? One of the things I don't like is when really bad teams – feel like what they need to do is go out and get a quarterback right away. That's that's it. Like, we're a terrible team. We're drafting high. We just got to get a quarterback. And it makes sense because how else are you going to get one unless you do it when you're terrible and can draft in the top five or whatever. But um, the problem is, like the Jets have done like 75,000 times at this point, you go out and you get the best quarterback available, arguably. You stick him in there behind not good offensive line with no offensive weapons, no real run game and a whatever defense. He gets sacked a ton. He looks like garbage. His confidence gets destroyed. And then after you slowly start to build around him, he's just a shell of him for his his former self. And he goes around touring the country being a backup quarterback for the rest of his life. And this cycle just continues to repeat. I don't like that. I would prefer teams to start stacking talent first and then stick a quarterback in there when you're ready. But whatever. We're going to do it the other way around. We have to start protecting him. If we do nothing but but help Darnold in this draft, we've done a good thing. So we're going to go offensive line. We're going to get some wide receivers. We're going to get whatever we can to build around this guy because he's going to be pivotal on whether or not we can ever be a successful franchise and do anything and possibly challenge the Patriots for once in our lives and not just be a terrible team forever. It is what it is, though. Um, but the defense isn't that bad. Um the stats aren't great, but there's talent on defense, so you know we're we're going to stick with offense for a while. Um, so I think that's about it. No, he is dealing with an ankle injury, uh, but similar to Ed Oliver, it shouldn't impact him too much. Um, I think it's just a pretty minor deal. So he's going to take some time to rehab that, and um, 
He'll be all right. He'll be good to go. With the sixth overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Cleland Farrell, edge rusher out of Clemson. Now, Cleland's a guy that's not only falling, but I'm kind of glad that he's falling. I don't necessarily dislike Cleland Farrell, but it's one of those things where when I see somebody that's mocked at 30 that I think should be higher than 30, I end up liking them way too much because this is ridiculous. Why are they, why are they way up here? They should, that was the case with... Uh, ah, Come on. I don't know who it was. The guy the Broncos got. Whatever. He was at like 30, and I remember watching him thinking, why in the world is he here? And then, you know, he couldn't get high enough for me. Cleveland Farrell was at one point like the number two, number three guy. I'm sorry, man. He's just, I mean, he's big and he's powerful and all this stuff, but I'm, I'm not seeing like the explosion and the bend and all this crazy, like freakish stuff. He's kind of a freak and he's pretty dominant, but whatever. Bottom line is, He's sixth on our board. We're going to call him a dominant, freakish edge rusher, second best in the class by a long margin. I don't know if that's true, but we're going to pretend it's true. And we're going to let that roll. Now, as far as the Bills, they're probably not too happy with the Jets because I would have liked to follow a similar formula there and get uh, offensive tackle, but it is what it is. There's no real good offensive people to take here. So we got to flip it over to defense. Um, The... um, Cleveland is currently top of the board. Uh, we got Jerry Hughes already, but the guy's 700 years old. Um, we have Jerry Hughes through 2019. So we'll have two years with uh, Hughes and Farrell, or one year, I guess, with Hughes and Farrell, after which we'll probably move on. Hughes is going to be 31 years old. Maybe we'll resign him for a year or whatever. But bottom line is Farrell's going to end up taking over uh, the the torch there. Um, and, you know, we, we, we have to make a move at some point. So... Tony Pauline had Farrell number two as recently as November. I don't understand that. I'm assuming he's changed his mind. I don't know. Um, I did have a Tony Pauline board at one point, but um, it was sort of an unofficial board. If you look at his summer scouting, I basically just took that whole list and made a board out of it. But that's so outdated at this point. It's just, it's no good. But he did win the Ted, Ted Hendricks Award for Best Defensive End in the Nation. Regardless of your opinion of him, he should be a pretty good addition. I think he's he kind of fits the Bill's mold of being kind of just this bigger, stronger, more powerful type of guy. So I I think it'll be a good fit for him. With the seventh overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Justin Herbert, quarterback, out of Oregon. So the Jaguars are a mess. (laughs) It just, it's, it's an absolute disaster. Not only is the team just in complete collapse mode, but as best as I can see, looking at over the cap, you guys are $7 million in the hole next year without signing a single player. $7 million in the hole. If you look at, um, uh, what is it, Spot Track, they've got you at $13.8 million in the hole. So you probably have to dump A.J. Boye just to get in the black. And now you haven't even signed any of your draft picks. You haven't signed any of your free agents. You haven't done a single thing yet. You just got rid of a very talented corner because we can't afford them anymore. So salary cap is an absolute mess. Um, the good news, however, if we draft a guy like this, is w- w- I mean, we have to move on from Blake Bortles. If we move on in 2019, <coughs> we're going to eat a ton of cap because we messed that up tremendously. But we can save $4 million out of the gate. In 2020, we save $18 million. So, so here's sort of what we're going to do. We're going to sign Herbert. We're going to get him on in 2019. We're going to get him acclimated. We're going to get our cap sort of figured out. In 2020, we're going to bring out what's left of our defense at that point. we got our stud quarterback who's got a year under his belt. The rest of the offense we've built in the draft, we've got a little bit more cap space. We're just going to try to push in in 2020. It's definitely not a rosy outlook, but I didn't create this mess. I'm just trying to fix it. Um, Herbert has not officially declared yet. There was some talk as late as a few weeks ago that uh, he's going to be returning to college. Um, no official indication yet. So again, some of these guys have pretty strongly indicated that they're going back to college, but until it's officially, they're going back, we're going to be mocking them. I'm not taking them out until it's official. Um, he is going to be playing in the red box bowl against Michigan state on new year's Eve. So if you want to check him out, check him out, there's, there's some movement as far as quarterbacks and who's the best, but again, board is what the board is. Ah, oh no, I forgot to get rid of that. (laughs) 
with the Bucks. Do you know who he is? Can you guess it? With the eighth overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Deontay Thompson, free safety out of Alabama. This is actually a pretty tough call for me. Um, defense is obviously a bigger need for uh, the Buccaneers. I know a lot of people want to mock quarterbacks. I think I did that in the last one. I wouldn't mind getting you guys a better quarterback, but um, <clears throat> the defense is definitely the biggest issue here. Um, I think one of the bigger problems, though, is that the highest ranked player on our board and by a pretty wide margin is Jeffrey Simmons out of Mississippi State who's an absolute freak and I want very badly to give freakish players to teams that need a lot of help on defense um however if I'm looking at it I, I'm I, if I'm not mistaken and let me know Buccaneers fans your pass defense is quite a bit worse than your run defense plus I mean pass defense is more important than run defense in the NFL beyond that though we've already got Gerald McCoy we just drafted Vita Vea. I don't know what he's going to become, but let, let's hope he can step it up. So we got McCoy, we got Vea. We'll hope that these guys can kind of step it up. We'll take a stab with Thompson and hope that we get, you know, like an Eddie Money out of Chicago out of him and we can really start to, to turn this thing around. I don't know how much progress we can expect in one year, but I think that this is has the biggest potential to be of of immediate benefit to the team today as opposed to Jeffrey Simmons where it's kind of like there might be some conflict there with the guys that you've already got <coughs> excuse moi moving on I really hope I didn't mess the rest of these up all right with the ninth overall pick in the 2019 NFL draft the Detroit Lions select Devin White linebacker out of LSU so once again Simmons top guy by quite a lot but um with Ashawn Robinson and Snacks Harrison no chance in, in the world that I'm taking defensive line. They, I, they, they, I'm assuming most people are going to disagree with me, but this could be the best defensive line duo in the NFL. Pro Football Focus has them ranked third and eighth. Third and eighth. That's pretty crazy. Um, but anyways, their second highest graded guy is White. Uh, I think this is a fantastic pick. Uh, White's an absolute freak. I, I, I really like him. You know, i got to watch a little bit more. Um, a lot of what I've been watching is highlights, so I like a lot of these guys more than I should. But I, I like to start with highlights just to kind of get an idea of what they do well, then watch film a little bit later, because a lot of times if I start with film, I just don't like anybody, because it's like there's so much hype, and then you watch it, and they just look like football players, and it's like, eh. I don't know, it's preference, whatever whatever you need to do. But, um, no, I, I really like him. Butt Kiss Award winner, um, and um, the, the Lions could use a lot of help uh, as long as with... <laughs> I can't think. They, they need help at line. They need help at a lot of places. They need corner help. They need linebacker help. They could use some safety help. Um, but I, I think this guy is is more of a enforcer type. And, and this is one of those things where it's sort of my opinion more than anything because you look at guys like Roquan, and he's Roquan's probably better than Devin White, but I like Devin White more than I like Roquan. Um, I just I, I need some thump. I need some enforcer with my linebacker, and Roquan just isn't it. He, he's, he's a... 2018 2019 linebacker Roquan is he's he's quick he's instinctive he's all those things but he's not an enforcer he doesn't have power he doesn't have I mean again if you listen to my videos last year I said it over and over and over again the guy's getting blown back by quarterbacks he's getting one hand in his chest and he's doing backwards somersaults Devin White is very athletic he's very talented and he also brings a lot of just power and just intensity and, and mean and you get a guy like Patricia and you, you look at the Lions and it's kind of funny because Lions are an offensive team but there's something about that team that you just feel like they want to be defensive right it's sort of like the Bears the Bears are meant to be a, a tough defensive minded team you know I think the Vikings were always meant to be in the NFC North the, the Packers are the offensive team I feel like everyone else should be defense the Lions are trying to make themselves an offensive team I feel like they need some some grit out there they need to just embrace it just go get violent go get mean go i don't know it's up to you do what you want to do if you want to stack offensive talent like you did remember that year they they went and got uh <coughs> eric ebron they already had megatron they had a great offense terrible defense they traded up and got eric ebron because they just wanted to double down and be the greatest offense in the world it didn't work man i'm just saying do yourselves a favor with the 10th overall pick in the 2019 nfl draft the New York Giants select Jeffrey Simmons, defensive tackle, Mississippi State. So about time. Um, I would probably, 
despite the fact that this is a really good value, I would probably try to trade out of this spot if I'm the Giants. Um, as much as I would like to work on other needs, Simmons is just way too... He's just better than everybody. He's too dominant, and I, it's just a massive steal. And the next three guys on the board are defensive tackles. Beyond that, it's not like we have defensive tackles that are freaks, right? We just gave away Snacks Harrison, so we don't really have that. But um, think of it this way. We got a fifth for Snacks. We drafted a younger, cheaper version of him. It isn't a one-to-one comparison, but Simmons might actually be a little bit better. Not not overall talent. I'm not talking like PFF score. Snacks is great. But this is more of an up-the-field pass rusher type. Very disruptive, very violent, very mean. Um, so I, w- I would have liked to have gone different ways with this and, and get some different players. Defensive tackle wasn't top of my list for things with the Giants. But in this spot, again, the top three players are all defensive tackles. The top player is a great value because he should have been off the board a while ago. I mean, it's, just, it's one of those situations. He's just he's right there. He's he's a can't miss prospect in my opinion, at least at this point. Um, disruptive, violent, crazy player. We we we've got some talent on offense. We'll we'll figure out the the quarterback situation and everything else later. But um, it's just the prudent move, I guess. There's nothing else to do other than trade, and I'm not doing trades, so it is what it is. With the 11th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select Rashawn Gary, defensive tackle, Michigan. <coughs> so listen, this is a defensive tackle heavy draft. So if you don't like that, listen, these guys have to go. I can't have guys like Rashawn Gary being the number 10 overall player and he doesn't get drafted until 32 because everyone's like, no, I need a guard. I need a wide receiver. We need a tight end. We. It is what it is, man. You got to take the talent that's available. That's just the way it goes. Now you can reach a little bit and we do sometimes, but we can't do crazy stuff. Anyways, Gary's the top of our board. I think he's a really good fit for our 4-3 system. The Bengals do need help along the defensive line on the edge as well as inside. Gary is going to do both. There's a question as to where he's better. I think situationally he's going to be on the outside. I think he's a better fit for the inside as far as the NFL. At least that's my current understanding. Um, Beyond that, any talent the Bengals currently have along the line is pretty advanced in age. Uh, Gary, (laughs) Gary was... One of the highest ranked, not not high, not recruited out of high school. He was one of the highest ranked that year. We're talking of all time, 24/7. You know the the website they they rank high school prospects coming into college and how they were ranked third in history, behind Jadavian Clowney and Robert Kemdichi. I know that doesn't necessarily mean anything, but I mean, you want to understand what kind of an athlete he is and 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 just the genetics and his abilities. Really, really, really impressive guy. Um, Gary has officially declared for the draft. He's sitting out the Peach Bowl. He's getting ready, so he's going in. We're going to see him at some point. <coughs> and um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm personally, I'm a little bit not the biggest Rashawn Gary fan. It's one of those things where he's super hyped, and I watch him, and it's just kind of okay. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I don't really see it. But whatever. He's graded really high. Somebody's got to take him. Bengals. There you go. With the 12th overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Josh Allen, edge rusher, Kentucky. So, the Packers are terrible off the edge. Mike Pettin has done a fantastic job scheming sacks. Uh, The Packers were one of the, at, at one point they had the most sacks in the NFL. That's fallen off quite a bit, I believe. But their ability to, his ability to scheme sacks has been really impressive, but... Nothing is coming off the edge. Kyler Fackrell, who's been a joke on this team for several years, has had like two, three sack games, so his numbers are pretty high. But that's not the solution to anything. Reggie Gilbert is a, a preseason phenom that can't do anything in the regular season. Clay Matthews hasn't done anything. He's going to be gone after this year. Nick Perry is just, I mean, I, I, I got nothing. I have absolutely nothing. I don't know what to say about Nick Perry, other than there's a good chance he won't be back. I think He's going to be one of those after, you know, June 1st cuts because that will save us a ton of money, and he's just pretty much useless to the team. Anyways, um, I like Josh Allen a lot. He's uh, pretty undisputed right now as the top outside linebacker prospect or 3-4 outside linebacker anyways, or any outside linebacker prospect, I guess, um, in this uh, defensive front class. Uh, Matt Miller recently compared him to Chandler Jones, which just, it's got to get you super excited. I wouldn't have thought that, but hey, Matt's doing his thing. 
I'll take that all day long. Allen won the Nagurski Trophy for top defensive player in 2018, as well as the Bednarik Trophy for the same thing. Later won the Lot Impact Trophy for character and performance. This is a guy, <coughs> even early in the season, I remember, I didn't even know if he was an outside linebacker or an inside linebacker because everyone was saying he's a pass rusher, but if you look at like the depth chart, it said he was an inside guy, and it's like he's not going to be very good, and nobody really liked him. All of a sudden, he just blew up. He, he just, he just similar to uh, Quinn and Williams, the guy just absolutely took college football by storm. Um, he is playing in the Citrus Bowl as well as the Senior Bowl, so obviously he's going to be in the draft. He's a senior, but um, hopefully he stays healthy and can really impress some people. He's going to go high. I, I don't know. He might go higher than this because he's just been blowing it out of the water, but the Packers need a lot of help off the edge and um, outside of tanking the rest of the season, trading away both firsts and probably some other draft capital to try to get up and get Nick Bosa. This is probably the next best fit for the Packers. So Josh Allen to the Packers. With the 13th overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns select Raekwon Davis, defensive tackle out of Alabama. So this is one of the guys I like too much. Um... I, I I acknowledge he's probably a good fit here at about 13, but I I just think he is unbelievably dominant. I love Raquan Davis. I did a video on him not too long ago. I I don't know, man. Just 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 the raw power. The raw power blows me away with this guy. He's he's not maybe as much of a get up the field disruptor. You know, you're maybe looking at more of a Snacks Harrison type than a than a get up the field type of guy. But just the, the power in his hands is incredible, right? I mean, he just he's one of those guys that can tackle people with his arm extended out and just he gets one hand on a guy in his chest and he just throws him down. He doesn't have to wrap up anything. It just, anyways, <coughs> moving on. I was a little bit torn on this pick. Uh, if we didn't just draft Ward, I might have considered Byron Murphy and gotten a second lockdown corner and just created a no-fly zone. Um, so I... In other words, if we didn't draft Ward, I would have gone corner. I still was considering corner, even though we got Ward, to, to just, let's just double up and just go crazy with it because it would be kind of awesome. But still, I think Davis is an absolute freak. Uh, I think the Browns' interior is a little bit soft. Uh, he will help a little bit with pass rush. But uh, let, let's, you know, again, you, you get these Midwestern teams, these cold-weather teams, um, you know, add, adding a little bit of toughness isn't the worst thing in December. You start hitting people real hard. Teams don't like that very much in the cold weather. So, I mean, he, he's, he's got that blue-collar kind of violence to him. Um, with, with the dominant attitude, though, comes a little bit of an edge. You might have to keep that in check. He was benched this year for a little while for throwing punches at another player. Um, I think you might get a little bit of that with him. I mean, he's just a big, mean, violent guy. you got to keep him in check a little bit. He Think and Dominican Sue, right? He's got a little bit of an edge to him. You got to watch that, but you take the good with the bad. I think Raquan Davis is a very, very scary human being, and um, I, I, I'd be happy. Even, even as a Packers fan, I know everybody would be upset. I would love to have just this violent, unstoppable force on the defensive line. So um, content with that pick for the Browns. With a 14th overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Washington Redskins select Noah Fant, tight end, Iowa. So, pretty tough spot. Um, for one, I'm always pretty skeptical of taking a tight end this early. <coughs> of course, I have a cough today. Um, it always just feels like a reach, and unless it's like end of the first and we're talking about a team that's right on the edge, I'm always a little skeptical. Um, secondly, I, I don't I don't know who the quarterback's going to be in 2019 for this team, so kind of makes it a little bit tough. But either way, Fant is definitely more of a receiver than anything else, and he's one of the biggest freaks at tight end that we've seen long time. I know we say that all the time, but he's another step up. With Reed constantly being hurt, Davis is a billion years old. Sprinkle is playing like garbage. There's very little talent at wide receiver. We just, we need weapons. Bottom line, we need weapons, and he's a weapon. So regardless of who the quarterback is, even if we get a new quarterback, I think having a talented tight end is pretty beneficial for a young and newer quarterback, for any quarterback, because it's just a safety valve. But if you think about like what the Eagles have with Ertz, just think of it like that, right? They, they didn't have freakish wide receivers, but the number one wide receiver on that team, it was Zach Ertz. So we're looking for our Zach Ertz for this team. We need to build some more stuff, but we need some offensive weapons, some offensive pieces, and this guy's very, very good. Uh, Noah Fant did declare for the draft. Um, where he gets drafted is definitely up for debate. I know some of these mocks have him going second round, et cetera, et cetera. 
this is where he's at on our board, so that's what we're doing. With the 15th overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Byron Murphy, cornerback, Washington. <coughs> so Panthers are probably having a panic attack waiting to see if the Redskins would take the top player on the board, who was Byron Murphy. Byron Murphy was the top guy, has been for a little while, and if I'm the Panthers, I'm just freaking out because I want him so bad. <laughs> Fortunately, I did go a different way, and I, I promise I wasn't doing it to benefit the Panthers. I used to do that kind of stuff. I used to look in the back and say, you know, who do I want to go here and see what? I don't care. Right? Whoever's on the clock makes a decision. Do I want to pick or do I want to trade? Because that's how it goes anyways. Right? If, if You can't be back there and say, hey, I'm the, the Steelers and I want to trade up, so I'm going to call and then I'm going to try to make... If I want to trade, I'll trade. If I don't, I won't. So anyways, um, I did decide to go in a different way. The Panthers have nothing at defensive back. Panthers fans, correct me if I'm wrong. I know sometimes people get sensitive like, oh, it's really good. I, I can't imagine you're going to argue with me. Including safety, to be completely honest. But you got to get something fixed. Um, and if you're going to compete in the NFC South with some of the talented freaks at wide receiver and some of the quarterbacks and whatnot that you got out there, uh, Pro Football Focus has Murphy graded as the number one in coverage. Um, I, I think a lot of people see Byron Murphy as the top cornerback. And by a long shot, I would not be surprised at all if he ends up being top ten and going before Greedy Williams. That's sort of where his trajectory is. But, again, at this point, this is what it is. Byron Murphy, incredibly talented. And, again, go to NFLBigBoard.com because you can go next to these guys. You can watch their highlights, their film. You can watch their news. The, the report is just takes you to the draft network and shows you their scouting report of them. But, again, it's just it pulls everything in. So you can get all their news. You can watch all their film. Go check these guys out. Go see what you think about them because I do want to hear your opinion. Again, fill up those comment sections. I want to know what you think. But, um Anyways, moving on. With the 16th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select DeAndre Baker, cornerback, Georgia. Another really good corner, another guy that some people think is number one, kind of moving up, moving down. He's a little more iffy. It's not as, um, you know, skyrocketing as uh, as the last guy. But um, anyways, I'm, I'm actually really surprised that I'm taking corner for the Eagles. I did not expect this. I actually thought the Eagles would uh, have corner as their strength coming into this year. Unfortunately, you lost Patrick Robinson. Uh, Jalen Mills, who was okay, kind of regressed. Darby, who was, I guess, okay this year, actually was worse than last year. Um, a guy who I thought was going to be a stud, Sidney Jones, right? That was that was supposed to be a really smart pick because he was the top corner in a very talented corner class, but he was hurt. Well, they got a steal later on in the draft than he should have been drafted, but they played it smart thinking, hey, we'll we'll take a year, and then they end up winning the Super Bowl in between. And now it's like, hey, we get Sidney Jones back. But, I mean, I know he's hurt, but regardless, when he's played, he just does not look very good. So at this point, I don't have a lot to go on that says you guys have very good corners. Um, it's just not a good unit. Baker's 17th on our list, third defensive back, um, but was third on Pro Football Focus's top 32 board. So third overall is what they had him at. So he won the Jim Thorpe Award for best defensive back in the country. Rivals said Baker is the top cornerback prospect in the draft. So again, a lot of different opinions and a lot of different guys. This is maybe the best cornerback in the draft. Again, let me know your opinions. This is where he's at on the board. Eagles take him at number 16 overall. With the 17th pick in the 2019 NFL draft, the Denver Broncos select Nikhil Harry, wide receiver, Arizona State. So it's a little bit of a reach, not going to lie. There are uh, two other prospects, but they just don't really make sense for what I'm looking for. Harry is very big, very strong, and essentially is a younger, cheaper replacement for the recently departed Demarius Thomas. Um, we need a spark for this offense, bottom line. I, I, I like the defense. It's not as dominant as it was in the past, but um, Chubb. That's who I was trying to think of before. Chubb and Von Miller, and, and you've got some other pieces there. We can keep adding to it, but I, I just don't think this team, granted you guys won a Super Bowl with a dominant defense, but I, I'm not going to try to recreate that. I don't know if you'll ever get back there again. That's a little crazy. you got to get this offense rolling a little bit. So um, does this solve all of our issues? No. be nice to maybe upgrade a quarterback, although things aren't horrible. You can maybe do better. You got to get something, man. The wide receivers just aren't it, and um, I think this is going to be a really good piece. Again, 
kind of looking for that Demarius Thomas type, just a big outside boundary guy. So Harry did def officially declare for the draft. Um, he went and found himself an agent. He's skipping the bowl game. He's all in. So we are going to see Nikhil Harry. Should be a pretty exciting prospect this next coming year. With the 18th overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Denver, or excuse me, the Miami Dolphins select Mac Wilson, linebacker out of Alabama. Um, board isn't laid out exactly the way I'd like. Uh, most of our needs just aren't good value here. Linebacker is on the list. Mac is a monster. I actually, I love. I love watching Mac, man. You want to talk about an enforcer? The guy's an absolute freak. He's he's, a, he's one of the meanest linebackers I've ever seen. Just kind of dirty. Um, depending on what happens with uh, McMillan and Baker, this could be a good unit in the near future. You got a lot of young linebackers, not super promising, but they're young. If they tend to, <coughs> you know, get a little bit better, it'll be a good unit. And some some Dolphins fans might look at it and say, "We've already got young linebackers. Why are you doing this again?" Because they kind of stink, man. That's why. Because they're just not good. Now the bad news here. I would put it at about 93% that Mac Wilson's going back to school. He hinted at it very, very strongly. But again, no official word, so we're doing what we're doing. With the 19th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts select DK Metcalf, wide receiver out of Mississippi. Um, somewhat of a weird and probably ill-advised pick. Just going to throw that out there. Top three players on my board are edge rushers, and I'm going to pass all that up for a skill position. Typically, you never want to do that, right? If you got a bunch of edge rushers, you probably want to take them. But I'm going to say this. Jabal Sheard, <coughs> come on with the cough. Jabal Sheard is a solid defensive end. We've got him for at least one more year. This Alkin Muhammad, who, <laughs> I don't know who he is, but again, I'm, I'm trying to learn. Let me know, Colts fans. Al, oh, sorry, Al Kadeen Muhammad. Top tier guy, took a second year leap. Maybe it's kind of flukish, but from what I can tell, he's kind of stepped up, looking pretty good. Am I wrong about that? Um, and then Kamiko, Kamoko Ture, who's not good, probably won't be good, but he's still a rookie, still has some potential to grow. So, so we've got pieces, right? We've got the older guy who's really good. We've got al Kadin Muhammad, who seems to have taken a really big second-year leap. And, I mean, the Colts' defense in general. What in the world was that? Did you just shut out the Cowboys? Just saying. Let's see how it plays out. Get a second target for our offense that's performing way too... I mean, the, 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 I think the offense, which has primarily been Andrew Luck and T.Y. Hilton, has just been... It's too good. It's it's too good. I don't think they get enough credit because there hasn't been. You guys haven't had an offensive line. You've had one wide receiver, one quarterback who's constantly hurt. Imagine if this offense. Now you've built a pretty good offensive line. Finally, you got Andrew Luck back, who's able to stay on his feet for four seconds sometimes. But imagine if you guys had like you know, a number two wide receiver. <laughs> I'm just saying. Anyways, that's just. If I'm a Colts fan. I want to just get this offense stacked because the production based on not having very much is impressive. Imagine if these guys had some serious weapons. T.Y. Hilton is a freak. Now you got six foot three, two 225-pound D.K. Metcalf who did declare for the draft. The guy's an absolute monster. Now the big negative on him, he's been out since October with a neck injury. Hopefully he's going to be good and back up to speed pretty quickly. I don't know the, the outcome of that necessarily, but I'm just picturing this Colts team with their 2018 defense, which somehow is just dominant. Now this offense has DK Metcalf. I mean, come on. Come on. With the 20th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Tennessee Titans select Ja'Kai Polite, edge rusher, Florida. So, yes, I do know that you drafted Harold Landry last year. I absolutely understand that. Here's what else I know. Morgan and Arakpo are ancient. Landry is graded as the 44th best edge rusher in the NFL and has 2.5 sacks. And the, the Titans are 19th in sacks. So calm down, okay? In fact, <laughs> I'm going to be a little bit mean to Titans fans here, but I just need to get out in front of this for those of you that are like, oh, we got Harold Landry and he's the greatest guy ever. I'm, I'm thinking you're not doing that, but I don't know. I haven't really interacted with the fans yet. We'll see how this goes. Let me throw a couple more facts out for the non-Titans fans out there who think, oh, they don't, you know, let me just explain something. Jarrell Casey is a defensive tackle, and Jayon Brown, the inside linebacker, are the only guys on the team with five sacks. 
The next highest is another inside linebacker, Woodyard, with 3.5 sacks. And then comes corner, uh, Logan Ryan, with three sacks. And then we get to Landry, who is an edge rusher, with 2.5 sacks. That's pretty trash, my friends. Six foot two, 260 pounds is what Ja'Kai Polite is. And into the future, we've got sort of the bigger, stockier Polite. you got the smaller, speedier Harold Landry. You know, small, big, I guess it's kind of, they're, they're similar, I guess. But that's going to be the duo going forward. And, yes, you do need somebody else to help you out because Harold Landry, who could, I, I like Harold Landry. I liked him a lot. Um, he's not really backing me up, though, with his play. <laughs> So, whatever. It is what it is. I'm curious to see how Titans fans and other people are going to react to that because I can just hear the seething. But, I mean, you you explain those stats to me. You got a good edge rusher? Who is he? Give me his name. End of story. With the 21st pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Greg Little, offensive tackle, Mississippi. Again, I know I can see the eyes rolling back in your head already. It is what it is, man. He's higher up on the board than some of the other guys. Um, but anyways, leaving that aside, the Vikings season, very disappointing. Right? There's been a lot of them. A lot of teams that were supposed to be really good were pretty trash. Vikings are one of them. Now, they're still probably going to be in the playoffs. Maybe they can make a push. Things can turn around, but things have not been good. I legitimately thought the Vikings were going to have a top five offense and a top three defense in 2018. Instead, the Vikings offense is 20th in points, 17th in yards. Their elite defense is 11th in points, 5th in yards. Either way, I'm not sure what else to do. You got your quarterback, whether you like it or not. You've got your running back, whether you like it or not. You've got your wide receivers, and you have your defense. And it's just, it is what it is. There's not much else to fix other than this offensive line. It is a reach. I do not care. If I had the second pick in the draft and Jonah Williams went number one overall, I'd still pick Greg Little <laughs> because, I mean, it, it, it just it's what has to happen. I just don't care. Um, the only real issue for me was between should, should I take Little or uh, Biotish out of Wisconsin, the center. Ultimately, I settled on Little for three reasons, um, despite the interior being a bigger issue. Number one, uh, protecting off the edge, especially considering his job is to block Khalil Mack twice a year, is more important than center or guard, right? We put him over on the right side. He's got to block up Khalil Mack. Everybody in the NFC North has to be concerned with that now. That's just thank you very much, Oakland. I will hate you forever for that. Number two, he's a little bit higher up on the board than Biotish. Number three, you can find interior offensive linemen later. Number four, I suppose, which I didn't write down, but it would be the fact that we just recently drafted a guy to be our center. He's been pretty trash, but, you know, again, maybe he can develop, maybe he can't. I don't know. It doesn't matter. But I think drafting a tackle who's higher on our board makes more sense at this particular point in time. As for his draft status, the young man did declare he's coming out. We'll be seeing him next year. With the 22nd pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens select Brian Burns, edge rusher, Florida State. So I really, really like Brian Burns. Um, he, he was... He, he's one of my top guys in terms of just raw athletic talent. I, I think he's an absolute freak. Biggest problem, he's listed in the 230s right now. So that's one of the things. I, I went on a big rant about Brian Burns, and he should be getting more respect. And nobody's talking about Brian Burns. And then somebody called me out like, dude, have you seen his weight? I mean, s some places even list him at like 215, which I'm sure he's bigger than that now. Hopefully he's already bigger than 230. But um, anyways, this, guy, this guy's a stud. Now, his size could be a concern, but if it's not, the explosion, the speed, the bend. Oh, my goodness. I love this guy so much. <coughs> Anyways, he should be a good fit for a defense that needs to find a replacement for Mr. Suggs. I mean, maybe this guy's just going to play for the rest of eternity. I don't know. Uh, I've been doing these mock drafts saying we got to replace Suggs since forever. He doesn't ever want to go away. That's a benefit to you because he also doesn't ever want to stop playing really, really well. I know defense is what you guys do well, and you probably want to help your offense, but it just kind of is what it is. Um Burns did declare for the draft, so um, we'll get a good look at what he's able to do in the NFL. But either way, I definitely like the guy. With the 23rd pick in the 2019 NFL draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Montez Sweat, edge rusher, Mississippi State. <coughs> so this is the flip side of the coin. I don't like Montez Sweat. I just don't. When I watch the guy, even when I watch his highlights, I'm not impressed. And that's bad. If you turn on a guy's highlights because it's like, all right, let's see, what this, let's see him at his best, and I'm watching it going... Okay, right? I mean, I, I, it, it's kind of like Cleveland. You know, a lot of his sacks are like 
six seconds going all the way around and chasing the quarterback from behind and getting a sack, and it's like, I mean, if you can't get to him in six, seven seconds, you know, anyways, whatever. We're following our board. It's another team that could use some help off the edge. Dupree was a complete swing and a miss. Watt, despite all the hype, especially among Packer fans who think he is just the greatest thing that ever, that uh, God ever created because we passed up on him, and it, that means he's a freak, he's been pretty average. Again, Steelers fans, if you disagree, let me know. Packers fans, I know you disagree, and I don't care because you're wrong. Um, but anyways, I decided to give you another edge rusher. Um, unfortunately, it's one that I don't like to add to your collection of not very good edge rushers. So <laughs> you're welcome. Hopefully this guy pans out a little better than everybody else for you. Uh, for the second time now, with the 24th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Oakland Raiders select A.J. Brown, wide receiver, Mississippi. Now, first of all, yes, I know, everybody likes Hollywood Brown. He's the new, cool, flashy thing. I haven't really seen him move up the boards all that much. I think it's more of a fan thing than anything else, but he'll probably move up, and A.J. Brown will move down. It is what it is. But A.J. Brown has been, like, top dog for a very long time. It's probably going to be that way for quite a while. But uh, the top three guys on my board right now are defensive tackles. We already took Quinnen with our first pick. That isn't to say we couldn't just double up and have a def- dominant defensive line, but um, the next guy on my list is Brown, and I kind of like the pick. Not only is he going to help my team immensely, but it's kind of a flashy pick. And um, considering how trash my team, in his team is and how much people hate me for giving away all of our, all of our talent, it's kind of important for me as Gruden to make sure that my picks stand out. So I've got Quinnen, who's got a good shot at being Defensive Rookie of the Year. Um, now I've got A.J. Brown, who's going to be on NFL Network getting highlight reel plays all the time. So people aren't going to be laughing quite as much. I mean, they might still be laughing, but uh, it's going to be a little bit harder to do if I can really hit on some of these picks, and I really need to hit. And not just hit like, you know, I mean, you, you can hit with certain players that just aren't going to make much of an impact, but it was, you know, like offensive linemen, like uh, um, Quentin Nelson. Right, real good pick, but who's talking about Quentin Nelson? Nobody. He's a guard. Nobody cares. I need flashy. I need the cameras on these guys because I need people to buy in and not, you know, get on their phone with their agent and say, "Get me out of here. I don't want to be playing for the Raiders anymore." <clears throat> I need people that uh, that can help me out, and I think AJ Brown's going to help me out with that. With the 25th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Seattle Seahawks select Dexter Lawrence, defensive tackle, Clemson. Um, I, I'm, I'm fully aware a lot of people are probably going to hate this pick. I don't know that. But um, Tyler Biotish is sitting out there. So that alone is probably going to make people upset. But ju- just stick with me for a second. The defense is and has been deteriorating for a very long time and is close to a complete collapse. we got to get back to making that great again. Lawrence is the top guy on our board. He's a force in the middle. With him and Wagner still on the team, it's still potentially a scary defense, but with a few holes that we still got to patch up a little bit. As for offensive line, it's a bigger need, but it's also a little bit of a reach. We're picking at 25, and Lawrence is 22nd on our board. This is a steal. It's a need for our team. we got to get back to building this defense. We can't just keep swinging and missing on offense while watching our defense erode we got to get back to doing what we do best and build up this defense. Biotish is 29th on the board. Again, do I want the 22nd best guy or the 29th best guy with my 25th pick? I'm taking 22nd. We'll look at offensive line a little bit later. Again, you can get guards later and later and later, and everything will be fine. (coughs) With the 26th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Oakland Raiders with their third and final pick select Christian Wilkins, defensive tackle out of Clemson. So back-to-back defensive tackle, boys. And I know I just got done with my pick saying I'm not doing defensive tackle. But now that we got our flashy guys, we're going to double up. And the cool thing about this is we've got Christian Wilkins and Quinnen Williams, and they're going to feed off each other. Do you know how dominant this is going to be? Even if Christian Wilkins was kind of mediocre, he's going to. this is the best-case scenario for Christian Wilkins because Quinnen Williams is over here. Quinton Williams is going to get double teamed and still beat the double team. And now Christian Wilkins has got one-on-one on the inside. He's just going to dominate and destroy everybody. <coughs> so on defense, we have built a dominant defensive tackle group in one of the better defensive tackle classes ever. So we're, we're capitalizing on what the draft is giving us. That's one of the benefits of having a lot of holes. We don't have to reach. We can take what is best and what is available. We can take the best value. We can get freaks. We can get all this stuff. We've got 
A.J. Brown on the other side, who's not only a pretty good wide receiver, a good slot receiver, but the guy's like 225 pounds. You know, you, Hollywood Brown is a freak, but the guy's like, what, 195? So A.J. Brown is... He's a talented route runner. He's a good slot guy, but he's also got some thump to him. He's he, he, he's got some some beef, so he's going to be able to bring a little bit of physicality. We went very physical with our first three picks, and I think that's kind of Gruden's style. Uh, we're going to be looking at more offense because, again, I think that's Gruden's calling card. He wants to call his Spider 2, Y, Banana, ZX, triple flip de dip and whatever nonsense he's trying to do over there in Oakland <coughs> or Las Vegas or wherever they're going to end up being. But um, at this point in time, we're playing it smart again. I, I can't pretend to be John Gruden. I don't know what he's going to do, but I think this was probably the smarter thing we're going to take. Again, what they're giving us, we're going to get some talent, and we're going to build it up, and we're going we're gonna to start. I mean, we're, it's a rebuild. We're starting from the ground up. We're starting with defensive tackles. We're getting a couple extra weapons, and we're just going to be building for some time. And hopefully we're going to do it the right way again, where we build – up our defense we build up our offensive line we get a couple wide receivers and then we replace Carr. you know maybe next year pretty talented quarterback class i believe especially with some of these quarterbacks this year possibly going back like herbert or whatever next year could be a very very good quarterback class so we draft some extremely talented people that are also somewhat not super impactful as far as winning and losing right you get dominant players on the defensive line and a good slot receiver how many extra wins does that get you in a year one, two, if, if Quinnen can get like a strip sack for a win. But you're still drafting real high. You still get a guy like Tua next year or whatever, and um, then we really make a push. Anyways, that's sort of my philosophy right now for the Raiders. With the 27th pick, oops, I'm glad I didn't click that early, the uh, Houston Texans select Tyler Biotish, offensive center out of Wisconsin. Six foot three, three 322 pounds. This man is some... He's, he's got some beef, man. But um, uh, listen, I'm not trying to count the Texans out in 2018. They, they're top of the top of the the heap. I hope they can make a run. Best of luck to them. Um, but I, I'm going to say that they're an offensive line away from a Super Bowl trophy. <coughs> Again, they could get it this year, but I mean, man, the talent is just dominant defense. You've got a really good quarterback. You've got a running back that doesn't ever shine because he has nowhere to go. You've got one of the best, if not the best, wide receivers in the NFL. This offensive line is just so trash, though, man. I mean, literally, if we did nothing else in this draft but draft offensive linemen, I think we we did a good thing. Because if we can fix the offensive line and just bring back everything we had last year, dude, dude, the Texans are going to be scary. The rest of the NFL needs to just hope you guys don't have an offensive line because it's just – you're already too good, and it's the, the offensive line is so terrible. So, <laughs> anyways, we, similar to the Vikings, I don't, I don't really care what my pick is. we got to go offensive line, and that's all there is to it. One of these days, I'll do something different. I'll get you a number two wide receiver, somebody else on defense because we got to mix it up. But um, it is what it is, and the value just was perfect with Biotis sitting right there. So, is what it is. With the 28th overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the L.A. Chargers select... Dwayne Haskins, quarterback, Ohio State. So um, 348 completions, 70.2% uh, percent completion percentage, 45 or 4,580 yards, 47 touchdowns, six foot two, 214 pounds. Very, very talented guy. Um, and no, by the way, this is not a swipe at Rivers in any way. He's having an awesome year. He usually does. This has to do with a 36-year-old quarterback whose contract is up after 2019. Obviously, it's possible we extend him. Chargers fans, let me know what the talk is. I don't know. I'm, I'm, you know, maybe we're looking at sort of a Drew Brees situation where it's like we can't let him go. We gotta resign this guy. He might get an extension because he's playing so well. But I don't know the situation there. Um, <clears throat> and it's also important that we get a. We, I, I don't want to wait till Rivers is gone and then get a quarterback, right? I, ideally. You're looking to get a guy about three years prior to when your quarterback's heading out. So this is probably a good time to draft a guy, develop him, let him sit behind Rivers, who, again, is playing like one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL right now, not getting as much recognition as he should, as he usually doesn't for whatever reason. I don't know why, <coughs> but extremely talented. And beyond that, this will help us make a little bit of a decision in the future because even if Rivers is playing really well, if he's looking for a new contract for like a year or two to make like, who knows what the price is going to be in, in 2019 for 2020 and beyond, but we're, we're talking $32, $33 million. If, if 
Dwayne Haskins is a very talented quarterback. It, it's kind of, I don't want to say like a Brett Favre situation because he wasn't all that good, but it's a similar situation to where we'd like to keep you, but we have Aaron Rodgers and we know how good he is, so we're comfortable saying, I'm sorry, your time is up here, and it becomes one of those situations. So let's build him up, let's develop him, let's see how he turns out. That'll help us make our decision in the future whether we want to extend Mr. Rivers or if we want to move on. And hopefully we move on because we need to focus on the future at some point here and um, also save a ton of money with a guy like Dwayne Haskins. Now, one of the benefits of getting a guy later, even though it's higher risk, is you get him, you get to start him and play him on his rookie contract, and that's kind of all the rage now. Get a guy, play him for four years on a rookie deal, and just stack free agents. But whatever, we're going to go old school. We're going to try to actually sit this guy and develop him so he can turn out to be a pretty good quarterback. And who knows, maybe he's going to be good next year, and we'll just play him next year. I don't know. I don't care. Whatever. Do whatever you want to do. It's your team. Have fun. Live it up. With the 29th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the New England Patriots select Jerry Tillery, defensive tackle, Notre Dame, 6'5", 306, 28 tackles, 8.5 tackles for a loss, 7 sacks. Not the sexiest pick in the world, but he's a good player, and he's going to a very good team. The Patriots have some very, very good pieces on defense, particularly Flowers and Guy along the defensive line. This gives them a third piece. Um... To be honest, there just weren't really a ton of other options. A lot of really good defensive tackles. The team's already pretty stacked everywhere. You can go in a lot of different directions, but why not just take the best value, put him on the defensive line with the rest of your talented defensive linemen, and just continue to dominate, right? It makes sense to me. I know everybody wants to find, like, what's the weakest link, and then just draft that guy, right? Well, why don't we get a wide receiver? Why don't we get... I don't know, a tight end to replace Gronk. or what? Because there's nobody here to take. There's, there's, I got nothing, man. What do you want me to do? You want me to take a third-round tight end just to satisfy your needs? We got other rounds. There's there's a second round and a third round. Just calm down, man. Got free agency. Relax. Relax. Act like the first round is the only round that exists. And I know with first-round mock drafts, it's kind of all you're getting. But um, you need to cool, man. For the second time, and this makes me so happy as a Packers fan, and to be honest, I was terrified that Gutekunst was going to trade away both picks to go get somebody, and I wasn't going to have two picks to play with for the entire offseason for the Packers. Could not be any happier that this is the case. I'm very upset the Saints are having a good year. Y'all need to knock it off. <sighs> Please lose immediately in the playoffs so we can get, like, the 28th pick instead of the 30, <laughs> 32nd pick. Anyways... With the 30th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Kelvin Harmon, wide receiver, NC State, 6'3", 213 pounds, 81 receptions, 1,186 yards, and 7 touchdowns. Defensive tackle is pretty tempting here. Um, Obviously, there's still a lot of them, even though we've drafted 7,000. There's still another 487 left uh, to go, being sarcastic. But it is tempting. I, I, it would be nice to get a guy. I, I, I'm a big Draymond Jones fan. I have been for a while. I know a lot of people aren't high on him. I, I like that he's, he's just a straight-up pass rusher. I think it would be good to pair him up with Kenny Clark and Mike Daniels because those guys are bigger, beefier, dominant guys. But to just get a true pass rusher on the inside I think would be pretty awesome. Um, but the fact of the matter is for the Packers, the offense is starting to fall apart, and we're seeing that. Aaron Rodgers is having a real hard time with his communication with his uh, w- with everybody, right? We've got brand new tight ends. There's no chemistry. We've, we've got brand new wide receivers. There's no chemistry. Devontae Adams is pretty much all he's got. And even with all the talent that Devontae Adams has as a route runner, there isn't a ton of chemistry there. We just saw it last night watching the Packer game. You know, there, there was a, a, a situation where he's like giving him hand signals and he's like, okay, here's what we're going to do. And he rolls over there and he goes to throw and he's not looking. It's not, you know, it's just not there. So the Packers, similar to like what I've said with a lot of other teams, the Packers' identity is offense, and we cannot continue the Seahawks, right? Your identity is defense, and you're allowing it to continually erode. The Packers have been going defense, 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 defense for like 10 years. Offense is whittling down to nothing. we got to get back to it. we got two first-round picks. I think it's pretty important that, you know, at least in the first two rounds, one of these guys has got to be a stud. Um, uh, offensive player, um, you know, maybe J.J. Arcega in the second round or whatever. But uh, I'd be really happy with this to have uh, Kelvin Harmon on the outside opposite Devontae Adams. Then you got Equinemius St. Brown or whatever in the slot. Jimmy Graham, maybe if we keep him, probably not. But uh, as a tight end next year, it's a start. Aaron Jones, pretty good at, at the running back position. 
Um, you know, it, it, it could be a spark, especially with a new head coach coming in. If he's an offensive minded guy, get a little bit more creativity. You know, I think Aaron Rodgers is getting bored. We'll see. But I do think it's important that we go this route. With the 31st pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Kansas City Chiefs select Derek Brown, defensive tackle, Auburn, six foot five, three oh six, forty five tackles, nine point five tackles for a loss, three point five sacks. So you can tell from the stats that this guy is more of a tackle machine, not so much a sack guy, right? Forty five tackles, three and a half sacks. Um, but look, the Chiefs are, are a freakish team, right? Again, Packers fan, you're going to get a lot of Packers analogies. I'm sorry, I don't know a lot of other stuff. But we're looking at the 2011 Packers. All offense, pretty terrible defense. Um, and, you you know, it's, just, it's not sustainable. It, it very rarely works. When was the last time a team that was just unstoppable on offense but terrible on defense just won a Super Bowl? I don't know. But you got to do it. Brown is the top guy on our board. We need some defensive tackle help. I don't know what else there is to discuss. Uh, we, we, we pair up Brown with Chris Jones. Um, Houston still playing out of his mind. D Ford finally stepping up a little bit. Could be a f- good front in 2019. But uh, we, we, we got to, you know, maybe we're going to win a Super Bowl. Again, I'm not counting anybody out. <coughs> not my favorites to win it, just based on the defense, until, unless you guys can turn it around. But, um, you know, looking at 2019, if we can build up this defense with the quarterback you've got and some of those weapons, could be pretty scary. We'll see. Finally, with the 32nd pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the L.A. Rams select Amani Aruarie, cornerback, Penn State, 6'1", 201, 48 tackles, three picks. Um, I'd love to give you guys some linebackers. But I'm I'm pretty content with this. The corner group over there, uh, you got some big names, but I don't know. There's a lot to show for it outside of uh, Mr. Nickel Roby Coleman. Peters is having a really terrible year. Shields just isn't very good. Talib is all right, but he's slowing down. He's 32 years old. Offense is great, but uh, getting into shootouts all the time, again, similar to the Chiefs, it's just not a recipe for success. The defense has got to be better, and not getting torched through the air is probably going to be the first step. Uh, Amani's going to be going to the Senior Bowl. We'll get a good look at him there. But if we got a shot of adding a true lockdown corner, we can let some of these other high-priced guys go. You know, because you got a lot of that. It's a lot of high-priced defensive guys that uh, you know some of them better than others. Um, but you know, I think we need to start building through the draft a little bit and uh, not just paying for guys, even though we've hit on quite a few free agents, offense and defense, really. But um, I think this would be a good good step. I, I think most teams in 2019, you got to get your lockdown corner. Uh, it's a real big piece. And if you don't have it, you're just going to get torched by some teams. And we can't have that. So anyways, folks, uh, thanks for tuning in again. That's not it. That's my notes. NFLBigBoard.com. I would encourage you to please check it out. Um, continually updating it. I'll probably work on it again today, this week. Uh, we'll see how many boards are being updated. But you come in here, and again, if you want to play along, again, you can sort down here if you want to look for uh, Matt's so-call right there, S-O-K. It's all locked up. You can go that route. If you want to look for tight ends, it's going to be my... Anyways, tight ends, right? you got a whole list right here. So you want to look. Who's Caleb Wilson? You want to check out his highlights. Cool. Boom. We're going to click right here. Check it out. There's his highlights. What you know about that? So, anyways, um, you folks, have yourselves a fantastic day. I'm going to try to do these once a week. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I also want to get some team-specific mocks up. But uh, time is limited. We'll do what we can. You folks, enjoy your day. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.